Is recording and streaming two different things? Yep. Yeah. We will have the recording for, yep, here we go. It's up now. Okay. Thank you. Um, we will have the recording for any of those just joining us available. Um, thank you, Missy, for yeah. letting me know. Yeah. And so the other piece is just, uh, you know, while numbers are still are generally coming down, uh, there's still a fair amount of cases out there and people are still sick and hospitals are still overwhelmed. So certainly my uh, suggestion, if that <laughs> comes up, is that we continue to mask. It's a small thing to do, um, but you know, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But just wanted to put that out there. Thanks, Missy. And then the last part of my COVID report is that the uh, clinic that was set for uh, Deerfield Elementary last Friday is now this Friday um, from 3.30 to 7.30 if you're interested in a vaccination or booster, um, please go to the Deerfield Town Deerfield's website where you can sign up for one. Or call you one of your schools and we'll help you out too. Thanks, Darius. Anybody else have any questions COVID related? Okay. Capital projects update, FY23 planning. That's me. Yes, sir. Um, can folks see that? So, um, kind of giving this as an overview for those watching at home, everybody in the school committee um, knows this, but we have a capital improvement subcommittee um, that meets to discuss the different capital movement projects. Um, and the subcommittee is made up, um, as you can read on your screen, four members from the school committee, and then um, four select board members as well um, from each town. So we get together and to get, we, we did start doing this years ago, I think my first year, um, to start looking at, you know, working together with the towns when we talk about, um, you know, capital projects instead of waiting for what suddenly appears on the warrants, working with each of the select boards in each town to um, get the needs of the school, especially as they're increasing as the building gets older. So um, the committee has met three times this year and has put together a, uh, a group of um, recommendations for you to consider to move forward um, for next year's FY23 capital projects, All right? Any questions on that process? I can't see you, so you have to speak up. All right, so the first one is, um, is to install air conditioning on the third floor of the high school. Um, and we're looking at doing 11 classrooms that probably at approximately $8,000 each. Um, and currently we're looking to, to fund it by using $50,000 from um, the HVAC and carpet line from the big six project from the, the, the large loan and school choice of $40,000. Um, this has been an update for those of you guys on the capital committee. Um, we did get an ups, updated uh, quote that reduced it. And so the original quote had $85,000 worth of school choice to be used toward that. Um, and there also, my little double star note there is that this also does not include some of the Eversource saving packages that are available that we'll be applying for as well. So hopefully that number will come down lower, but we have to go in assuming that we're not going to get those um, and be prepared for funding the whole thing. Um, as you guys know, the when the building temp, I mean, I need to justify it, but I will anyways. Um, the building temperatures on the second and third floor, especially the third floor, when it's 80 degrees out for more than one or two days in a row, um, can can get those classrooms by 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning past higher than 80 degrees. And we're seeing more and more hot days at the beginning of the school year and end of the school year, as well as the amount of moisture schools are retraining. If you look at what happened in South Hadley and the millions that they're spending to mitigate the mold that happened in that building, that was directly related to humidity levels and not being able to control that in the building. So this is more than just about our students being comfortable or our teachers being comfortable in the classrooms. It's also about... Um, protecting um, our investment in our building. So um, the idea is we're gonna start with the third floor. That will have an effect on the entire building as coolness will settle and drop throughout the, you know, throughout the building. So um, we're very hopeful that that's gonna um, um, be very helpful for the teaching environment. I think we should probably pause at each one and then, <clears throat> well, yeah, pause for questions and then I'll move on to the next one. How's that? 
questions on air conditioning. And then you're gonna have to have to make a decision on whether or not you wanna move forward with any or all of these, okay? Um, the second project is the tennis courts. Um, the tennis courts right now are, uh, are at, uh, we, we did resurface them a, what it was Marty Barrett's second year. So that was our first year where we do CPA. We didn't resurface them, we, re, we patched them. Those patches were supposed to last uh, five years and that was done in 2013. For those of you who've been on the committee a while, it's gonna make you feel older. Um, and um, so the, those courts have reached end of life. The cracks um, on them are um, wider than a quarter. Um, we, we have been filling them in, but every year moisture gets into them, freezing and expanding them. And now they're starting to uh, come undone, uh, different levels and that kind of stuff. Right now we're asking, um, we did get a back of the envelope number, the cost of the tracks, about $175,000. Um, we got that from Berkshire Design when they were here working on the track. I asked them if they could just give me, you know, what the basic back of the envelope number would be for that. So we had an idea. Um, but we would like to start going, move forward and use $20,000 of school ch choice to hire a designer to conduct the, the preliminary project work to um, design and uh, prepare to resurface those tracks. Um, questions on tennis courts? Keith? Does the community have access to the tennis courts when the high school teams aren't playing? Yes. Thank you. Tennis courts are unlocked. There, there is the question about whether or not you do CPA funding and that kind of thing. Um, and we can have that discussion and we go for the larger funding of that. I think we're going to have, um, you know, there's a lot of different CPA projects happening in different towns. So I know it's probably a tighter um, ask. I mean, they probably should resurface them in 2013, but at the time they chose to go with the patching group. I can't see people. Lynn, so. Lynn, you got a question, Lynn? Yeah. What do you mean by designing the tennis courts? So just like the track, whenever you do a project of that type, you have to have someone come in um, and figure out, you know, what's going on. Uh, they probably have to do a core sample to figure out what, how the uh, underlying structure is put together, then, you know, what kind of surfacing and how you're going to do it. They basically have to be engineered. Um, and then talking about whether or not we need new fencing and other types of things. And basically they, they're the architects of the plan. So similar to what we did with the track, then they come in, they give us the pricing schedule of that. And then we can figure out exactly how much it costs and put it out to bid. Because something like that's gonna be over $50,000 and we will be a sealed bid. They'll also do oversight for us during the project like they did with the track as well. It doesn't mean, so the timeline of this, because those, those those tennis courts, we're going to limp through them this year and probably end up having to limp through them next year with a summer dig-in. So the idea would be to, you know, get the project, get the plans in place through this summer. Next fall, we try to figure out how we're going to fund it and then um, get the bidding in the early parts of the year, like this time of year is when the, most of those asphalt companies and <coughs> tennis courts are <coughs> I don't know, Phil, if you're really trying to close your mouth or, or you were doing something there. Um, and um, looking at the spring neck the following year to um, do the project work. So spring or summer, depending on timelines and bid specifications. That wasn't me coughing, Darius. That was no editorial comment whatsoever. Sorry. I don't know who did that. Uh. <laughs> I don't even know what it would be referenced to. So I'm really lost if it was. All right, so other tennis court questions. All right, moving on to roof study. So as part of the, uh, as part of the uh, bond that we got for the big six projects was $405,000 for repairing certain flats of the roof. <coughs> and when we brought out roofing companies to start looking at, so, Bob originally, Bob Lesko, back you know, you know, five, five, six years ago, originally said that there, there were certain flats of the roof that were starting to get near end of life, and we had to put money in to replace those. Well, meanwhile, it's about five years has passed, and so the rest of the roof is starting to get near end of life of the rubber um, 
decking top that, that that's that's there. I forget that we call that. Um, and so we brought out a roofer that um, you know to start getting ideas about what has to be done there. And he said basically you have to know what before you dive into this, you eventually your whole roof is going to have to get done. Okay, so within the next five, pushing it ten years, um, that whole roof is going to have to get done. And you're talking upwards of $3 million or more. One of the big million dollar questions, um, really talking about a million dollars there, is what, what is underneath the surface for insulation and how is that holding up? And what is that the integrity of that insulation underneath some of those flats of those roofs? And so the only way to do that is to do a roof study where they go through and again, do sample core samples. And they also use something that they scan the top of the building with um, and are able to um, see through surfaces to see um, where how the roof is structured. Um, with with that study, what we'll be able to do is determine if we can do this project in segments. You know, can we use the four hundred thousand and do a couple of the flats that need to be done now that we're getting most of the leaking happening and hold off on the other ones? Um, you know, how bad are the other ones? Because we might want to do this in sections, but get all that information. Because right now, if we went and spent the four hundred and five thousand dollars, did a couple of flats, and then I went back to the towns, I we went back to the towns in four years and asked for another two million dollars to do the rest of the roof, they're going to say, "What the heck are you guys doing?" Um, so basically, we're trying to get a full study done to exactly what has to be done because this project is in the millions. Um, um, also based on the amount of equipment that's in the roof that's going to have to be moved and, and so on and so forth. But it is the that rubber roof and it does have a lifespan and it is starting to deteriorate. Anybody from the committee, did I miss anything on that? Because that was that's, this is one of the ones that's a little bit more complicated. Well, it's, it's sort of the following paragraph that is sort of interesting to me, Darius. Um, oh, just... let me go to the following paragraph then. So... Shelly and I were talking after this, and the question was, so the recommendation was the first part here, to allocate 20000 of the 405 um, for roof repair bond to hire the architectural firm. We are recommending that we um, use 20000 of school choice. And not borrow, not, we, right now we'd have to reopen the borrowing to get, from that, to get that 405 because we haven't borrowed that 405 yet. Okay, because remember, we only borrow what we need. And right now, we borrow for the HVAC, the carpet, and the track. Okay, and so if you look up and you say, like, where did that, why we're making this recommendation is that we, if you look up at number one, we, we, we have the savings right there um, where we, the, the committee originally um, said to put $85,000 from school choice to do the air conditioning. We're saying, well, instead of going and opening up that, that borrowing, maybe we just shift some of the school choice to this project, um, leaving that 405 there. But that was an idea from um, Shelly and I, but that was certainly up to how you guys want to do that. All these are really up to, this is the recommendation of your subcommittee. You can do it any which way you want. Um, that's what it is, Phil, if that makes sense or not make sense. Questions on that, Phil? Do you want you have different thoughts? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so so that was sort of my recollection of the discussion within the committee that you know that 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 option was presented to the committee, but um, uh, uh, to, to the subcommittee as well, and that the the, the reasoning behind the, the uh, taking it from the loan. I guess I was the one, the proponent of that. And uh, admittedly, that reasoning was somewhat esoteric. Not to go into it all again, but um, the you know, I, I guess that you put in there. You, you, you and Shelley must really feel strongly about that to to put that in there again. So, um, Shelley, do you have thoughts on that? Uh, well, if you we want to get moving, what's that? I said, if you don't, you do now. No, it's fine. Yeah. I do. I mean, I, I think if we want to get moving on this, and I think it is something that we have to get moving on, I don't feel like we should put out a request for a loan for $20,000 and then pay interest on $20,000, even if it is a low rate and our towns on something 
that likely is not going to be able to be funded through this. I mean, if we're talking millions of dollars, we're looking at a whole other avenue. So from that perspective, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me to, to take it from that borrowing. Um, if we're ready to borrow for something else uh, on the list and we're going to go borrow another 100000 or 200000 and 20000 of that is going to be for the roof, that's fine, but I don't believe that we're looking to do anything like that until at least the summer, if not the fall, starting discussions, given what we already have on our plate for capital expenditures. So that's one piece of it. And then the other piece of it is, you know, we have the school choice funds available. Um, you know, I don't want to downplay and say, you know, keep saying it's only $20,000, but it is in the grand scheme of things, we can afford the $20,000 versus assessing the towns. And then we'll have more information on what we're really asking for in the future. Okay. Okay. Thanks. And then the last um, one, number four, is to place on the Warren a $75,000 um, replacement of the kitchen walk-in freezer refrigerator and the underlying concrete. So over time, the condensation and the leaks of the refrigerator has deteriorated the concrete underneath it. And it actually, ha we need to have that repaired um, or else we're going to have to start having major structural damage um, or extended structural damage um, to that flooring. So um, basically the cost that we have for the walk-in fridge and the estimate on of um, for the repair of the concrete is $75,000. And that's the breakdown. Those would this would be something that we would request each town to put on a warrant um, to be funded out of uh, how they want to fund it. But many times out of free cash or however they are funding warrant projects. So and then you can see um, Shelley broke down those what it would cost each of your towns as well. It looks good. Yeah. Can I just make a comment on that last piece before we keep going so everyone has the full picture that um, we have an old quote and so the number may come in less than 75000 and obviously money would go back to the town if that's the case. If we don't um, fully spend it on this project, it, there's also a chance that it could go up. You know, our, our, the cost of things right now is so expensive. So. Um, we might have to cover a portion of it. I also heard that there was some discussion as to whether or not the concrete actually had to be fully replaced. I think there's some differing opinions on that between the various vendors involved. So, you know, the 75,000 is sort of a rough estimate that we're looking for the towns to fund. And as I said, we would return any that we didn't use. Thanks, Shelley. So are we gonna are we gonna have to vote on is each, that each one of these have to be voted on? Um, yeah, straight. You want to do into you want to do individually versus the package? Package, package, package. I would say have someone speak up now if they don't want to if they want to do it individually. If someone has a reservation regarding one of them, speak if up so, now. If, you can do it yeah. if somebody doesn't want to do it in the package, speak up first, please. We might want to consider, and maybe I'm overthinking it, but we might want to consider a vote on what's going to the towns for a warrant request, and then a vote on the things that we're paying for independently. Maybe. That sounds that sounds good, Shelley. That sounds. Does everybody have a problem with doing the package of the first three? If not, can I get a motion and a second, please? I'll make a motion. Thank you, I'll Judy. Second I'll second. I'm, I'm holding my breath. Like, Sorry. okay, who's I'm typing. Speak? I'm typing a motion that isn't written down anywhere. I know. Also, I know. Well, okay. you do that first, and then we'll have get a second. There was a second. Who was I'll second that. that. Thank okay. you, Olivia. We'll wait on the vote until you're ready. Um, I believe that the vote is for, to for the to accept the subcommittee recommendation for the. Funding plan for the third floor, that air conditioning on the third floor of the high school, the design planning for the frontier tennis courts, and uh, hiring of an architectural firm for a roof study. I believe that's plan one, correct? Vote one. Yes. 
We got we got a motion and we have a second. We'll do a roll call unless we have any other questions. If not, hearing none. Bob? Yes. Oh, Missy, Missy oh. just raised her hand. Uh, sorry, I am I'm just curious whether or not we need to specify uh, the twenty thousand coming from where that twenty thousand for the roof study is coming from. A good point. Are you going with the committee's recommendation or the administrative recommendation? Dun dun dun. Uh, well, the motion we just made says it's with the committee's recommendation, so maybe we ought to clarify that motion. Okay. Phil, go ahead. Clarify the motion for me. Oh no! Oh no! Okay. I don't know about that. <laughs> I can't see the uh, sheet anymore. I, so I think I think the administration. I think the administration was recommending twenty thousand coming out of school choice. Right. So. It's, it's yeah. the committee's recommendation for option number one and two and the administration's recommendation for option three. But by taking 20,000, we're going to have to borrow on it, Phil, in, on the committee's recommendation. I understand. Yeah, okay. I, understand. I understand. I agree. I mean, I'm, we're just trying to clarify the what we're whatever. I don't probably overthinking everything as usual. But, but if we have it in school choice and we don't have to bother anybody about that. We yeah, just... yeah, yeah. Um, I agree. Okay. I agree, Bob. I agree. Okay. Does anybody have a problem with taking 20000 of school choice? Okay. We'll do 20000 out of school choice for the roof study. You got it, Judy? Um, yes, but no. And Darius, you just need to send me that sheet, and then I'll, and then I'll straighten it out in the writing. I understand what you're saying. I just, it's all over the place, so. Sorry. Okay, I don't mind. Okay, so we're going to go back to Judy. You should have in your inbox. I shared with you earlier today. Thank you. Okay, so on a motion from me, seconded by Olivia, to accept the subcommittee plans for option one and two, a one being the high school air uh, funding plans for the high school air conditioning on the third floor and the um, funds to hire somebody to look at the tennis courts and the administration recommendation for. Um, the roof uh, study for twenty twenty thousand dollars twenty thousand from school choice. Yep. Everybody agreed on that. Yes. Okay. Yes. Week now. Yep. Rob. I mean, sorry, yep. Bob. Yes. Lynn. Yes. Bill. Yes. Olivia. Yes. Judy. Yes. Mary. Yes. Uh, Damien, I saw you pop in there, right? Oh, yeah, I got in late, but uh, yes. since I was on the subcommittee, I'd like to vote yes. Thank you. Keith? <laughs> yes. Missy? Yes. Bill? Yeah. Thank you. And now the second one is for the fiscal year 23 warrant for... For the walk-in yeah. freezer? Yeah. Move to request, move to request that the, the towns put the article on their warrants for the walk-in freezer. A second. Any comments or talk, or should we do a roll call? Roll call. Bob? Yes. Lynn? Yep. Bill? Yes. Olivia? I think Olivia's going to say yes. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Judy. I lost Judy. the cursor for a second. It happens to all of us, believe me. Um, Judy, yes. Mary? Yes. Damien? Uh, yes. Keith? Yes. Missy? Yes. Bill? Yep. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Now we can breathe for a second until we get to the next big one now. Uh, New business FY23 budget proposal. Bill, do you who's going to start this? Yeah, I can do it. Not a problem. We had a couple of meetings as a budget subcommittee, and we sent the admin back to the drawing table once to bring us back another number. And we at the last meeting, we uh, we all felt we felt comfortable as a subcommittee with the number that you're going to be looking at. It may not be as low as we would like it to be, but it, it's as low as it can be, given, as you will see, the things in there that are not within our, our control 
versus the the little slice that is within that control. So Shelly will explain the the details of it much better than I can. All right, I'm just getting files ready here to share with you. Shelly, I promise this will go smoother than the one a little while ago. <laughs> it's all good. Okay. All right, so since this is the first time that the majority of this committee is hearing or seeing this, listening, I'm going to sort of start at the beginning. My computer does not want to share. Very slow. Okay, so I'll start at the beginning with what our process is for the budget. So we start off looking at a needs-based, student-centered, and fiscally responsible budget. Uh, we take input from key stakeholders and school leadership to collect data on what the needs are. Uh, we look at existing services, so to fund with level services for existing staffing and programs, while also considering new needs and initiatives at the same time. So just want to note that level service doesn't mean level funding. Um, level service includes cost of living adjustments for all of our staff, district-wide teaching staff and non-teaching staff, um, and considers any other inflation that may be necessary for programming. And a good example of that is um, athletics. So athletics sees some adjustments every year in some of those accounts. So, um, and then we voted on some new sports for the for the current year that we're in. So those were new in 22. They remain level service in 23, but they're hitting the budget in a different way because we added them mid-year this year. So um, I just want to make that really clear to everybody that it doesn't mean that it, were, it costs the same amount of money as it did in the prior year when we talk about level service. There's always an increase, but what we do is look at existing staffing and programming first. Uh, from there, we look at historical data with each expense account. So I go through everything with the fine tooth comb that's in those budget reports that you all see. I look back at a two to three year snapshot, see where we've been over and where we've been under in prior years and make adjustments accordingly so that we're properly funding accounts. We don't want account lines to be overfunded and inflating the budget and we don't want account lines to be underfunded. Uh, a good example of this is the software and technology accounts. Over the last several years, the district has added additional programming for curriculum and then district-wide networking needs and communication platforms. Um, we found ways to fund them over the last few years, whether it was grants or moving money between various accounts. And one of the recommendations this year uh, specific to technology is to go ahead and make an increase so that we're properly funding those things. Again, not new initiatives, just right-siding accounts that are already in place with contract um, commitments that we have with various vendors. We also look at contractual and non-contractual wage adjustments. So the original draft of the budget had a placeholder for teachers and IAs because we were in contract negotiations. Um, as those get settled out, they get adjusted. So uh, I believe that that is on the agenda tonight, Darius Wright, uh, as additional new business. Um, to accept the contract settlements with the teachers and the IA units. And so the second draft takes into account where we did final settle with those two groups. Uh, but there's also placeholders in there for non-contractual staff as well. So all of our support staff, whether that's custodial, uh, office staff, central office, administrators, um, we do consider a COLA adjustment for everyone in this budget draft. Then we look finally at new requests and uh, as well as special education expenses like transportation and out of district placements. Those are things that we have to look at every single year. They change throughout the year anyway, but we try to be as prepared as possible. For example, we look at the incoming sixth grader and the special education department will try to determine how many of those incoming sixth graders need specialized transportation or do they need an one-to-one uh, -one IA in their IEP. So we try to have as much forethought in that as we possibly can and make adjustments there as well. And finally, we look at revolving funds uh, to make sure that the revolving funds can handle the related expenditures that are associated with those programs. And if they cannot uh, handle them, if revenue is dropping or expenses are increasing, we see if anything has to be placed on budget moving forward. 
So after that initial process, the budget a first draft, which was from uh, January, came in at 5.72%. As uh, Bill said, they sent us back to the drawing board to work on that number because that's obviously not an acceptable piece. Um, so we did have for new initiatives in there, several new positions. Uh, there was a couple of support positions that were being factored in and then a new faculty position. We also adjusted existing account lines. Uh, like I explained, I gave you a couple examples up above the 25,000 for technology and software related. And then the out of district placement is a really significant cost for us that's going up next year. 190,000 in our out of district placement costs increasing over the current year. Part of that has to do with uh, inflation and programs also increasing their tuitions. Um, and then there's additional transportation expenses as well. So as Bill said, there's a lot of factors that are outside of our control that were included in that 5.72%. Um, things like uh, uh, increase to our Franklin Regional Retirement Assessment, we don't have any control of, of that piece of it. Increase in transportation costs for special education students. Uh, increase in employee separation costs for sick buybacks. These are all pieces that we really didn't have a lot of control over. So when George Darius and I sat down to talk about how we bring that number down, you know, we had to be a little bit creative about how we were going to get to a number that's more palatable for our four towns. So the current draft presents, the second draft um, as of today, presents a 3.64% increase over the prior year. Uh, we eliminated two of the three new positions that were proposed in the initial draft, and then we moved 134,500 onto revolving accounts. So you can see uh, there's a lot of pieces that we, we couldn't just wash away. Um, and, and we can only throw so much on other revolving funds such as school choice or special education revolving. So there's not a lot of wiggle room for us to continue to move down. But we have dropped, you know, the 134,000 plus the two positions, the two positions totaled up to about another 80,000. So, you know, we've moved over 200,000 off the budget and, you know, done what we could to get to that number. So it's probably still a little bit higher than some would be comfortable with. I will tell you historically, we have been right around this number. Uh, FY19, we went at 3.62, 20, 3.78, and 21 was zero because of COVID. Um, so, you know, we're hovering, last year was just under three at 2.97. So we're hovering right around where our typical number falls in. Um, so that's just some historical data for you there. And then da, 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 the assessments. So you have a lot of information that I shared out and I'm not going to go through all of this, but what I want to talk about is how the assessment is built. So there's various pieces of the assessment. So our chapter 70 funding, which is our state aid that comes directly to us from the state. There's a minimum required contribution that the state factors in as part of the chapter 70 formula. We have transportation credits that we apply, which is funds that comes back directly to us from state reimbursement. And for FY23, you'll see that number is significantly higher than it was in the prior year. And that is because if you remember last year, you voted to put excess regional transportation reimbursement into a stabilization fund. That was an additional 116,000 that we could apply to the assessment next year, which is helpful to all four of our towns. And uh, the way that that law works, that you have to use those funds in the prior year. So we can't hold any of that 116,000. We have to use it immediately. We allocate 200,000 of excess and deficiency, so our free cash helps offset the budget. And then this remaining number of 3.5, that's what the four towns have to then fund on top of what the state says that they're required to pay. So this is essentially our budget shortfall given all of those credits that I just explained. Um, so we're looking to fund an additional three and a half million for, through the assessments. The uh, enrollment portion of the assessment is based on uh, a five-year rolling enrollment. So we dropped off 2017, add in 2022 numbers to get our totals. Um, and I have looked at this where if we were doing it a single year versus a five-year rolling and it really doesn't change the numbers very much, but it, it's just something else that we might want to look at in the future. Um, 
Okay, so let's talk about what it looks like for the town. So again, a lot of historical data. Conway FY23 is looking at a 2.64% increase, $40,000 over the prior year. Deerfield is looking at a 0.98% increase, about $40,000 over the prior year. Sunderland is coming in at 5.91% or $116,731. And Waitley has the highest increase next year at 14.36% and $131,000. We have fluctuations like this every year. You can look back, I'll highlight here, you know, Sunderland saw it last year. You know, and the question always comes up of why do we have that fluctuation in our numbers? Why is there not more consistency? How can one town, you know, Deerfield's down 4% almost from the prior year. So how can one year be high and one year be low? And it's a complicated answer. Part of it is based on individual town enrollment that hits our five-year rolling um, part of the assessment calculation but a big piece of it is in the chapter 70 and then the state minimum requirement for each town to pay which is also based on enrollment but additionally it's based on the town's wealth so every year that formula is recalculated and it considers local property uh, values as well as income of town residents and you know unfortunately we had this discussion about Sunderland last year we at least seeing that hit next year uh, oh and then I wanted to know outside of the budget that the band proceeds so that we borrowed 930,000 the numbers here will be a separate assessment to the towns for the interest only portion of our borrowing any questions about all of that before we keep going you know, it's a lot of information. No? Okay. So next steps, you know, we want to have a discussion about whether or not we move the budget forward with the 3.64% and the full committee accepts the subcommittee's position as far as that being where the budget is currently at and that there is no other room for movement. Uh, and we present this to the towns at each of our town meetings and, and uh, we talk about it further at our public hearing next month, um, or we talk about additional steps to reduction and what those steps look like and what it would mean to the assessments. Bob? Shelly, um, I wasn't at the last meeting. Can you tell me the two new positions that we were gonna try to get do you know, can you can you say what those two positions were? Sure, George, jump in and cut me off if I'm getting anything ah, wrong yeah. here, please. <laughs> um, one was a new building monitor position, so someone who helps cover a lot of our transitions, arrival of students, dismissal of students, lunch duty coverage, you know, any, especially um, middle school related, I think it's a very heavy position in that regard. Uh, so there was a request to add an additional staff member to that role, so we eliminated that. The other one um, was the addition of a new English teacher. And while I'm saying we eliminated the faculty position, what I wanna say is that we're still in planning stages with the idea that we are gonna hire a new English teacher, but because of a change that just happened recently in another department, uh, I believe it was math. We had a resignation recently and we have hired a long-term sub for the rest of this year. George and Sarah and Scott are looking at how to reconfigure the staffing to remove the math position as math is um, more heavy in faculty and reallocate some of the student placement for especially middle school, I think, George, if I'm remembering correctly, um, and put yes. a new English teacher in instead. Yeah, and, and what we'd be able to do, Bob, is because the numbers are actually are shrinking a little bit in the middle school, we'd be able to to, to actually play with, we, we, we would have fewer sections of students in the middle school, so we'd have extra staffing at the middle school level for math, so we'd be able to actually, to be able to move a math teacher, and so we'd be able to hold on to the, to be we'd be able to hire an English teacher, we just wouldn't have to add it to the budget. Okay, because I knew we were, I know we were short an English teacher, when I just heard that we weren't going to get, I say to myself, but I can understand the reconfiguring and stuff. So thank you. Does anybody else have any questions for Shelly so far or, or anything? 
Bill, what do you think about the budget, Bill? You've been here the longest. I, um, you know, Waitley's got the Waitley's got the prize this year, and that that's okay. We've had the prize before, and all the towns have had the prize before, and that's not that's not the not a big deal for me as Waitley's representative. We'll uh, we'll deal with it in Waitley. The thing of it is that, unfortunately, if even if the committee was of a mind to try to make cuts in the budget in order to do something for the town of Waitley, town of Waitley pays eleven percent of the bills. Yeah. So to save them a dollar, you have to cut eleven dollars out of the budget. You know, it doesn't. It can't. There's no place. There's nothing left in there to realize to to produce any big savings in Waitley's assessment. You'd have you, you're down to people, people and programs at this point in time. There there is nothing else left. If it was a the town with the largest share, it would be a lot easier to try to do that. But with eleven or twelve percent share that Waitley has, it's not something. It just it isn't it isn't feasible. It isn't possible. That's why we came forward with the recommendation to approve the proposal that you see the three point six percent or whatever exactly what it was. And the subcommittee, uh, all four of us, were were very comfortable with that. Thanks. Now tonight we're not voting on the budget tonight, are we, Darius? We're going to do it. Uh, so we're going to do it after public comment time or not public public you'll, hearing. You have a public hearing on the first. And then after that meeting, you can decide um, what you want to do. Yeah. So people can digest this budget uh, between now and then. And if you need further information from Shelly and myself, just reach out. Um, and then we'll have a hearing on the budget where it stands. It will be gone through again. And then you'll discuss at the, you know, at a hearing, you can always, you can always lower the budget after the hearing. Um, you're not supposed to raise the budget after here. So, um, you know, if people have, you know, if we have a discussion afterwards and we hear back from the towns that, um, you know, they want us to consider something or that kind of thing, we can have that discussion then. And then um, we've even in the past, even the past recent years, scheduled another meeting on the, after the public hearing to vote the budget because we were not, we were waiting on more information or something of that sort. So don't feel pressure from the time. Feel free to ask questions and um and such. Darius, with what happened with us tonight in Waitley with with the public hearing and the town and stuff, do we want to try to put we have different problem, Bob. So Frontier okay. has to have we being Frontier, not you and I have a problem. Right. We as at Frontier have a different problem because we have to announce what our budget is to the towns with a certain number of days. And so we gave ourselves, I believe, a week's latitude. Um, from the first, I think it's due by the eighth. I'm running roughly off my memory here um, to give we you know before we have to submit a budget to the town 45 days prior to the first town meeting. Okay. So unlike Waitley or any of your elementary schools where you can go up almost up to the day before town meeting, I mean you had a problem getting written on the written warrant. Usually that's the deadline. So, but you really can go a lot closer. Where Frontier has to set its budget a lot earlier for the exact reason that towns need to be able to prepare such a large. Um, so we're going to still going. To, are we going to all? Since we're going to have to meet with the town of Waitley for the elementary board the night of our public hearing, when are we going to meet with with them about Frontier in the other in the other towns? Right. So what we haven't been able we've we you know so this is again uh, Bob's kind of bringing up the problem that that problem the situation we're having with the, the towns. Where they're asking um, Shelley and I and the, and the committees of the elementary schools to go and present the budget to each school, each finance committee and select board, in addition to our public hearings and such. The problem with you really have to do for Frontier because you're multi, you know, town and voice in the budget. They really need to come to our public hearing. That's why we have it for them to come and give us their feedback on that. So, what's happened in some of the towns? They're asking us, you know, not to vote the budget until. They meet with the finance committee, which is kind of, it's getting kind of, it's getting tricky with, you know, with the amount of players involved in budgets now. And, and as I said, I even said straightforward and, and Wheatley, the authority of the school committee. It's your authority to make a budget, whether or not the, you know, I'm not saying you want to go against your town governments, but it's your authority to have, to, you know, this is the budget you think is good. And, you know, to quote Mr. Smith, you put it up a flagpole and see who salutes. You know what I mean? There's a, there is a part where you you fight 
you know, four years. Sorry if I stole your line for later, but um, okay. Um, so that's kind of what I'm saying. So right now, our public hearing, we have to know two weeks in advance when our public hearing is going to be. So if you're going to move that, I just you need to let me know when it is because we have to put in the paper and all the legal guidelines to that. So, um, Darius, could, um, so just, I just want to encourage you to hold the line on that. And um, that when you think, just, just I'll, I'll just speak about my own town, the number of committees that wanted to, to hear from uh, their own private budget presentation is the finance committee, the town capital committee, um, etc. I also note that on this call right now is the Conway Town Administrator to be, because you know we talked about this how 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 can we keep a superintendent in our employee if we make them go to if, if we if if we construct a budget process where they have to do um what well, four four budget meetings for every town for each town separate um it, that's that you know that that's a completely unreasonable ask. And so the only way to do, and, and unfortunately it requires like the re-education of new people as they come on to all these different committees. And and nobody really ever tells them that, hey, they don't have jurisdiction over the school. So um, so it falls upon sort of Darius to do that, every, to have those discussions sort of repeatedly every year to new people. But um, just, just hold the line because you're the only one that's gonna, so. Yeah, we had we had 45 minutes of talk by a finance committee member at our last meeting tonight. And it was, you know, we finally came to an arrangement that we're going to try to meet. They're going to try to meet with us during the public. Hear we had to change it, make it during the public public hearing so we can get everybody out at one time. And, and it's a good point for people to consider who we're talking about is like you have your public hearing as your time to meet with your town governments. I mean, it's kind of like the announced because the public don't come to our public hearings. I've been here long enough. It's only the town government that really and, it, and rightfully so. They're the ones that are, they're, are watching the budget, investing the budget and have to talk about the budget. But that's, you know, essentially what our public hearing should be is that that's when we we're saying, please come and let's talk about our budget. Um, in a separate one, especially when it happens afterwards for them. Um, for Frontier, you know, it, the budget's set, you know, and so, you know, it's been kind of sharing. Um, and I think I think the process was put in place with best intentions. Um, I think it was to try to have more transparency and conversations around the budget and buy-in when there was separation from what was happening um, in the schools and what was happening in the town and trying to build communication there. So I get that part. So you got to have a balance of the two, but I mean, Phil, you're right. So nine. So Shelly, it's not just me. Shelly, have nine meetings yeah. to do the final passing of the budget, and then go to all five town. I mean, four town meetings. So, if we're just on budget. You're going to do 13 meetings um, on the final budget. Yeah. Mary has her hand up. Mary. So I think it's important to note. So, I mean, this is a budget. Um, of the Frontier Regional School Committee, which are 11 members. So if you start having all these separate meetings in separate towns, we don't all get to hear the perspectives and everything gets watered down and splintered off. And that's why I think it's important that the public hearing is, is the venue for this so that we all hear the same thing and all four towns get to hear each other. I mean, it's it's a budget of eleven of us. Our budget. Perfect, perfect, Mary. Darius, can we can we work on can we work on that in the next couple of days? Is that going to screw up things? But can we work on to get get the town officials to come to our public meeting? We'll invite them all to the meeting on the first. Um, and encourage them to come. Um, it gets, you know, as you know, it gets, the, there's a tricky dance that I'm playing here. And I agree with you, Phil, and I was very clear in, in my Waitley conversation that, you know, the towns also own their schools. And so, you know, they're, they're elementary schools where they share the responsibility for the regional. So when they want to come and talk about what's going on at the elementary schools, while I'm asking for, you know, cap, you know, you remember, so we have, you know, also five different capital requests happening at once as well. So, I have to go and talk, you know, they, they want further explanation of what the capital requests are and that kind of stuff. And we actually got into it in Waitley this evening about, you know, how specific 
can their request of information be that's reasonable and doesn't you know fall out of the school committee's authority? So it is something that I, I, you're absolutely right, Phil, where you said that people have to be re-educated um, as new people come on committees about what the role is of each. But they we also are 70% of their budget. So they need to also have the transparency of what's going on. So trying to find a, a balance um, between the two. So um, I'll encourage them all to come to Frontier because that is one where Mary's exactly right. This is it's the it's the committee's budget and it's the four town collectively's budget, not just you know um, that kind of thing. And so um, is the public hearing in Zoom format or in person? Currently, we've been doing Zoom, so we're this. So okay. Um, you know, that's up to you if you want to change that. But that right now, um, if we well, do I mean, it, Theoretically, that should make it easier for people to attend because yeah. they could sit in their pajamas and go to the meeting. You know, so what's your excuse at that point? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, Bill. I have my pajamas on right now, as a matter of oh, fact. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I thought you'd all like to know that. Yeah, actually, I I, I didn't really, but it's okay. I, Does anybody have any, I, I always pictured it in my imagination anyway, to tell you the truth. <laughs> does, does, any, does, does anybody else have any questions about the 3.64% increase? And we're it's not going to vote budget. on it tonight, huh? It's a good budget. Yeah. It's a good budget. It's a good, it's, it, it, was, it was a good solid effort. It is good. Another one reason that I failed to mention that we didn't go any farther with this thing is, you know, you generally don't shoot back until you're shot at. And we haven't been shot at yet. So and we don't have that many choices within this budget. So let's take like let's take it out there and see what happens with it. And then if they collectively ask us to please do something else, we have a couple places we can go. Not many. We got a couple left, but you don't want to, you know, you don't want to use them all now. Perfect. And, and you know, the, 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 the only the, the only town that got hit, at, you know, was 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 Waitley. And really that that corresponds with their increase in student percentage. Pretty, pretty it's big. Um, it's it's yeah, big yeah. for Waitley. Seven or eight so, kids is a big deal. It looked like Deerfield went down, you know, close to 40, 30 or 40. I think it was. I didn't look, you know. That's why they're at point nine per nine eight percent or whatever. So, hey, it was our turn. And, there's, you know, and remember, there's other factors in that too. So, it really, the conversation and when you you know and Bob and Bill, you go and talk to the town. Yeah. Like, what are their finances? This is what we don't have knowledge of. So we can see that their assessments up, but like Conway's assessment that was at it was over a hundred thousand, one hundred twenty thousand, whatever it was four years ago. Also had to do with the amount of revenue the town made that year. So it was money in, money out. And while that's upsetting to the, the town government that the, the state's watching, it's like you make more money, you pay more taxes. The same kind of thing happens within the formula. Okay, they look at the wealth of the town and did you make more revenue? And so the question is what, it's not just students alone. So what caused Waitley to make more revenue this year to make such a, I mean, that's a huge jump. And, you know, we're looking at, you know, if it's population alone, I mean, next year, we're, this is likely to happen again. Um, you know, just because I see the Deerfield is going to have a really small class coming in. Anytime Deerfield has a small class, they eat the biggest part of the budget. They eat 50% of it. If they have a small class, that means other people are going to be hit next year. You know what I mean? So it's going to be, I'm trying to project ahead, but um, I almost, you know, I also look at Whaley and they had $60,000 of savings last year. You know what I mean? Like we're, we're seeing a pattern where there's great savings and then people are getting hit. Great savings and people are getting hit. So I don't know if there's a way to sta create a stabilization on some of that or I don't know. Or that's just how they have to use their free cash off of that. And and what you know what you're talking what you're talking about is that minimum contribution and that uh, uh, and that EQV factoring that goes into that. And I think one of the things that's so unfair about that is that they include the the um the income of town residents and when when our towns are small enough. When we did, Conway did a deep dive into that a couple of years ago when our numbers all of a sudden were inexplicably huge. And um, it was just one very wealthy family that moved into town. That's it. That's enough to do that to the whole town. 
Wow. Um, and and um, so and and it's it. They also evaluate. They they weigh all four towns that are in the region together, so that it's one's rise, but another one's fall, what. It's the ratio of whatever, and um, but the, the the amount of weight that they give to people's income is really unfair to, to small rural towns. Yep. That that formula that formula inherently results in these seesaws. Tom, administrator from Conway, would like to. <laughs> I just had I just had a question about that. So, does it mean in this formula that it's the four towns themselves, and we're always being juxtaposed against each other to make yes. this balance? Okay. All right, yes. thank you. Uh, anybody else got any questions about the budget? If not, we're going to proceed on. Okay. Uh, the next two things, we're going to table them to the next meeting. Is that correct, Darius? Yeah, let me just get the head the, up on we, we have um, reached a, a proposed settlement agreement with the union, so we, we've ended negotiations. So how it works is I got to build I got to build the agenda. So we came out and I said, well, it's a week and a half away. Maybe we'll have everything lined up by then. We don't. It's still going back and forth with minor corrections here or there, um, and the association still has to vote on there and to approve it as well. So I had put it on there optimistically that the turnaround time could happen in two weeks, and perhaps I was overzealous in that. But we have um, reached a tentative agreement, and um, you know we'll present all that with you in its final form at the next month. So we are excited about that. Okay, then we're going to go to reports. Um, I don't have anything. Uh, Lynn, do you have anything from the collaborative? Uh, not really. Their um, newsletter just came out uh, for Black History Month. They have a bunch of links on their website that educators can go to if they want some information on Black History Month. Cool. Um, other than that, we've got a meeting coming up soon. Thanks. And Darius... Uh, yeah, no, nope. no report. Okay, and we don't need to go into executive session. And how about a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Bill. Phil, second. Judy. You guys don't like raising your hands anymore. Well, oh, oh. Oh, be <laughs> before I forget, yeah. we're, we're going to lose Judy after this uh, year. Yeah, we're going to need a new secretary, Bill. No, it's a no. thankless job. Uh, so yes, just think can. about next. Think about next year. If somebody wants to be secretary, please don't put it on me. You can't share and type the minutes. Because Darius is saying, don't have Bob do it. No. Nope. <laughs> How about a roll call? Bob? Yep. Judy? Yes. Keith? Yes. He's saying yes. Lynn? Yes. Mary? Yes. Missy? Yes. Bill? Yep. Yes. Damien? Yes. Bill? Yep. Last but not least, Olivia? Yep. All right. 716. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Thank you.